Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we will be starting my first series in this channel which will be based on Verilog. Verilog as we know is a basic skill set required for anyone who wants to pursue VLSI in future or for the students having VLSI as their subject. This series is designed keeping in mind that the viewers have no prior knowledge about Verilog and thus we will start learning Verilog from scratch and slowly proceed toward the advanced level where we will design some complex circuits in Verilog. Let's dive into the prerequisites and the structure of this series. Prerequisites as this course is designed for beginners, so just a basic knowledge of the digital electronics concepts are required like number system, truth tables, k-maps, fsms, etc. These concepts will be revised in the course itself whenever it is required. So you do not need to worry about the revision part because it will be taken care in the course itself. Also, you would require a laptop to practice the Verilog code as practice is very important to learn any programming language. Course Structure First, you will learn about the basics of Verilog. In this module, you will get to know about the brief introduction of Verilog, how a program or simulation works in Verilog, what is the time scale of simulation in Verilog, and what is the different types of data types and operators which are there in Verilog. In the second module, you will learn about the different types of assignments which is used in Verilog. As Verilog represents hardware, there are few additional types of assignments in Verilog compared to other coding languages. In the third module, you will learn about delays, which is a very important concept in the Verilog programming. In the fourth module, you will learn about the subroutines in Verilog. As Verilog has time dependent simulation, thus Verilog has few additional types of subroutine present in that. Fifth module is about different types of procedural blocks present in Verilog. As we have seen earlier that Verilog has two types of assignment, procedural and continuous assignment. Therefore, the use of procedural blocks is very important in Verilog and a good knowledge of procedural block is a must in Verilog programming. In sixth module, you will learn about different models which is used to write Verilog code. Basically, a hardware can be represented in different level of abstraction. For example, a hardware can be represented in terms of logic gates or it can be represented in terms of its behavior. In seventh module, you will learn how to write test bench. Whenever we write a very long code, we need to verify our code and for that we have to write the test bench. So in this module, Basically, we will learn about how to write a test bench and what are the different things we have to consider or we have to verify in the code. With this, the theoretical part is over and now we will move to the practicals. In this module, we will practice many different codes, some of which are visible in the screen. Once basic level codes are completed, we will start practicing some advanced code like the code for sequence detector, uptown counter, 8-bit ALU and many more. This is how I have planned this course to be. And I will try to make this series as interesting as possible so that you can have a good time learning very long. I will be uploading one or two videos every week in this series. So stay connected and hit the bell icon to get the notification as soon as new video is posted. If you have any feedbacks or want me to add additional topic, feel free to leave a comment and I will surely try to work on that. 
Thanks for staying with me till the last and please do like, share and subscribe my channel.